San Francisco, my hometown. We're here at the base of the Golden Gate Bridge in the fog, and that may be the best, best picture of what the ARIA conference is gonna be in San Francisco this year. A way to see out of the fog in the real estate market now to see what opportunity is gonna be. For the next five or six minutes, spend time with me as I show you some of the places in San Francisco that you're not gonna to wanna to miss while you're here at the ARIA conference. It's very obvious to me that you don't wanna spend time at the hotel when the great classes are happening. But in the evenings, perhaps a few days before the conference begins or after the conference ends, there are gonna be places that you wanna see that'll make your trip the most memorable experience in your life. From the Golden Gate, which was a historical entrance for many Asians into the United States, we now are at the gate to Chinatown, one of the first large Asian communities in the United States. This is the entrance that is only about nine, ten blocks from the Palace Hotel. It's a short, comfortable walk. I recommend that when you come through here, spend some time in Grand Avenue, which we're going to go to. This is the main tourist spot in San Francisco for Chinatown, and a lot of souvenir shops are here. But we're also going to go into the back alleys of Chinatown to find out where the locals eat and shop. So come with me as we see San Francisco's Chinatown. Back in the 1950s and 60s, uh, when I was growing up in Chinatown, this exact intersection of the corner of California Street and Grand Avenue was considered by many of us the sort of the limit of where we could go and supervise. And at that time, while there were shops and stores that were part of Chinatown technically, once you cross this street, you entered sort of into the non-Chinese, non-Asian world and reached closer into the downtown shopping areas in the financial district. Over my right is a restaurant called the Empress of China. This is uh, the last remaining of the big three major Chinese restaurants uh, from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It was Empress of China, Imperial Palace, and the Mandarin. And of the three, this is the one that has survived and remains. Uh, it's also really interesting that if you have a chance to come here, uh, that on the basement level of this building is a shop that really locals will shop at the, for all kinds of um, sort of unusual things you wouldn't find elsewhere, uh, like the lion's head for the lion dancers. And we're gonna take a quick look at that. And on the first floor are souvenir shops, so there's really the downstairs that I find most interesting. I remember coming here as a child growing up in Chinatown and just kind of scrambling through. And in here you find some things that uh, you might not find in a typical souvenir shop. Um, you can get those souvenirs also, but they're items that are a little more unique and perhaps a little more historic. Uh, statues that are used for various types of worship. You know, on the wall to the right, you see cooking utensils. On Washington Street is a San Francisco Chinatown institution. It's a restaurant called Sam Wall. It has been around for, I would imagine, over 100 years. I remember my father coming here when he was a young man in Chinatown. And it's famous really for serving a Chinese porridge called juk. They do some great little salad dishes. The menu's not extensive, but the food is great. And more importantly, you can see in the window, it's open till 3 a.m. This is the place you would come to after the bars in Chinatown close. Then we're gonna have lunch here. Come on, come on in. We're now sitting in front of the meal that was just served us uh, in Sam Walls, and what you see in front of you are three of the dishes that I remember having when I was growing up. Two of them you might see in some other restaurants, one you will rarely see. And let me describe them. The first one, the favorite, is right here. It's a raw fish salad. And you may have had raw fish from other cuisines, but this one is particularly to the Chinese culture. And it's mixed with some deep fried rice noodles, You've got some pickled vegetables, you gotta put some lemon on here, you mix it all up, and it's just
fantastic. Now it does have some peanuts on it, and again, that could be asked to be left off if there's a, an issue of allergies to it, but if you come here and you're interested in trying something really different, you can't beat this. Boy, that, mm, that brings memories of when I was growing up. And I tell you, growing up meant both as a child here with my family, but also being a little older and coming here after the bars closed, because that's what this restaurant is famous for. It's open till three in the morning. Now the other two dishes here, this is a chow mein dish, and it's a chow mein dish made with duck, uh, which again is not commonplace these days, but it's the traditional Cantonese soft noodle type of chow mein, a little bit of gooey. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a sort of the gourmand type, but it's really the soul food type of chow mein that I remember growing up with. Mmm, great stuff. And the third dish we're having today is a traditional Chinese rice porridge. And it's really rice that is cooked over low heat for a long period of time. The version that uh, I've ordered is with uh, shredded pork and the thousand year old duck eggs. Now, the thousand year duck eggs are eggs which have been um, fermented, or not fermented, but, but soaked in brine and lime uh, to get them to almost crystal, crystalline quality. And it has a really transcendent type texture to it. Mm. Now, your thousand year old duck eggs aren't something that you're interested in. They also serve this type of porridge with chicken, with pork, with beef, so many, many other options. But you should always have, and they serve it automatically, these Chinese noodles uh, that you put in here, and it absorbs the porridge, and you just eat this, and this, this is a wonderful, wonderful combination. So whether you're here for lunch, or more than likely here after you've had a chance to visit the Buddha bar down the street, this is the place to have your midnight snack.